Hello and welcome to Kevin Does Another Video of Lightwave 5.0 on the Amiga. Yay! This particular Amiga today is my vampire. So what I'm going to show you today is how to do quick and easy water. We call this Lightwave Miracle Water. Why is he calling it Miracle Water? Because it's a miracle, it's so easy to do! Many programs back in the mid-90s, and remember, we're in a time machine. When you watch these videos, you were in a time machine. Back then, it was really difficult to do neat looking water. You had to do all kinds of crazy hacks with some of the software. But one of the neat things Lightwave had was a really fast and easy way to do water. So what we've done is I've loaded up a square, a polygon, a rectangle, whatever you want to call it, subdivided it, hence all these triangles, and it looks like something from, uh, I don't know, Microsoft Flight Simulator 1.0 maybe? Yeah. Anyway, Go to surfaces, or in the modern times, we call these materials. Set the diffuse level, or what amount of light it will reflect to the lowest levels. Everyone talks like I do, yes. Anyway, so that's down there, down to 20%. Specular, as we discussed in the last video, is the fake reflection of lights in the scene, not actual reflection. Reflectivity, well, that's where we're gonna get our water from, so we're gonna turn that up a little bit here. So now we've got some reflectivity, we've got smoothing turned on so that the polygons won't render all janky in 1980s. We want them to look 1990s, not 1980s. Bump map, and this is the secret of Lightwave Miracle Water. Crumple, the Crumple Procedural, a mathematical-based formula to generate graphics and art for you. It's got some options here, amplitude, scale, small power, size. You can go in here and adjust this to taste. We're gonna go ahead and make sure we're in ham mode. We're in a resolution that's not terrible. I am ray tracing reflections. Yes, and in software written in the mid, uh, mid 2000s. In the mid 90s, I am ray tracing reflections to uh, show you this point. This vampire should be able to hand that, handle, hand that, handle that decently. Press F9. That'll get our render going. That's not so bad. There we go. A little water firing off there. Isn't that neat? Shouldn't talk, just watch it, be amazed. And look at that. So what we've got here is this kind of almost ocean-like uh, water stuff going on. And it looks kind of jagged and janky because, well, it's ham eight, as you can see over here. But also I didn't do any of the anti-aliasing or the smoothing that makes the pixels or the image look better. Uh, in the background, we have this temporary or fake uh, sky, as we call it. Fake Sky is a feature under the Effects tab called Gradient Backdrop. I can turn that on and off. This is just a real quick way to give you a fake background for reflective things to do their thing, which is reflect. So that's really cool. I kind of made like this kind of fakey looking -y, ocean y thing that looked neat from just a flat polygon, but oceans aren't really necessarily always flat. So if you go back to the Objects tab, we got our water demo object here. We got Displacement Map. You click it. You can pick some fractal bumps, a lot like the surface down here bump map. You pick some crumple and then did some adjustments. Now we can apply kind of the same thing, but instead of to the material or the surface, we're gonna apply it actually to the object, this polygon thing out here. And we're gonna go ahead and as you can see, I've already applied this, I'm being sneaky. We're gonna set it back to 100%. Gonna hit use and watch what happens. Bonk. Ooh, look at that. Happy little waves. Dips and valleys, rises. Oh yes, yes, that's nice. Let's see what that looks like. He pressed F9 and then waited, wondering who watches these videos. Do they watch these videos? He knows only he watches these videos right after he makes them. So here we can see the water slowly chunking out, being rendered. Do, 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 do. Look at it go. Again, we're not using any of that anti-aliasing, that smoothing, so it's going to be a little janky and boxy and jagged looking, but it still illustrates the point. And because we're using a real 68060, which is fast, but it's not, you know, that fast. It's not like crazy fast. So look at that. Boom. Now we got some displacement going on, and now we're getting a little bumpy water. This is kind of looking like the water that I used in that apple floating on the water animation I posted a while ago, because because it is. This is the type of setup I used f 
for that. So that is how you can create some cool, quick water. You basically load in your polygon, make sure it's subdivided, and you create your objects in the Model Shop Modeler program and bring them into layout, the, I guess you'd call it the Soundstage program. And then you can apply some displacement map to it. And again, I didn't vary too much from the defaults, but the cool thing about Lightwave is you can instantly see what that displacement map is going to do. It shows it right here. You don't have to, like, you don't have to go object displacement, you know, and then like punch in these values. I'm like, I don't know what it's going to do. Huh? It actually, boom, it shows you right there. And honestly, on the, on the, my real 1200, which is to my right here with its 50 megahertz, 60 to 30, it's not that much slower to show this. It is slower. I'm not going to lie to you. It is slower. But it's not so much slower that it becomes useless. But that's a really cool feature. And you know what's kind of uh, weird, guys, is that a lot of mainstream 3D software that's in use in production today, it took them forever to even be able to show displacement like this in the viewport before render. I'm talking even into the early 2000s, software still wasn't doing this. Yet here's Lightwave back in the mid-90s showing displacement in the pre-render stage. This is, I mean, I can't under, I can't undervalue, or I'm not even saying the right words because I stopped taking English in ninth grade. I can't uh, express how cool this is, how important this was way back when that it could show something like this in the viewport. And if you, if you wanted to animate this so it looked like undulating waves, you could do that and you could make a preview using the preview button and you would see it play back. It was so cool. And, under surface, the material, we added that bump, that all important bump, crumple. And that's what gave us the cool looking uh, bumpy, crumply water. Of course, we added some reflectivity. We turned down its ability to accept light. And you're like, well, why would you do that? Well, to simulate mirrors or mirror surfaces, they reflect a lot of um, reflected light back, but not actual direct light. So the direct light, we wanna reduce that. Otherwise, let's say if I made my water pink, and I had the diffuse set to 100%, even if I had reflectivity set like to 60 or 70%, it would just look like pink water. Now, maybe you want pink water, and that's fine. But this is one of the things you can do to turn that down. There's all, like again, in my previous videos I've talked about, this is a whole process, a whole tutorial in itself to explain how these things actually play off each other. I'm just trying to give you the most basic options here of how this works. And again, smoothing to make sure the polygons look nice and smooth. And again, under camera, we did turn on reflections so we can actually see not only the water um, reflect, but we can see it reflect itself. And that's that really came into play when we displaced it like this. So see this little hump, this rise here? This little hump rise over here may actually see this and it will bounce light. You know, I'm using my pointer here as a guide. It'll bounce its reflection into here and this guy will bounce his reflection into here and we'll, we'll see the water basically seeing itself. That's why ray tracing the reflection is important. You don't have to ray trace reflections if all you care about is that fake sky showing up in the water. In fact, we hit F9 again, it's gonna render faster because it only has to reflect that fake sky. And you may look at this and go like, well, it looks the same. Well, you know what? Art is in the eye of the beholder, right? So here we go, and there you go. That rendered a lot faster. And honestly, yeah, it does look almost the same. When I had ray trace reflections on, you were seeing more of this this dark areas, that, which is the ground being reflected, reflected back into the water's self, into itself, um, and you were, you were seeing little clips of the water being reflected into itself. Again, if you put other items in here, like put a boat or a little rubber ducky floating in the water, if you didn't turn on that ray trace reflection, you wouldn't see the little rubber ducky reflecting in the water. So that's another reason you want to use the ray trace reflections when you're using water. I did not turn on ray trace shadows because at this level, it's not really important. But if you had a little rubber ducky floating in there and he had a shadow and you wanted to see that shadow on the water, you'd need to turn on the ray trace shadows, but it's gonna be slower. Anyway, that's how you make the uh, famous light wave miracle water. Wanted to make a quick video and this is almost quick. In fact, it's almost 10 mark quick. Wait, that guy's videos have like three names, something like Something computing, Tenmark, Doug. And then there's that Chris Edwards guy. And then there's Dan Wood. Wait a minute. What's going on?